Hi, it's Dr. Ron England here. I'm going to do some simple mapping with CalTopo. Um, I use a Garmin watch. This is this, a Garmin to track my tracks a lot of times. And I want to make maps out of some of the courses that I do. I'm going to show you an example here. Uh, Garmin uploads into uh, Garmin Connect, which has in the options the ability to export the GPX file of it. You can actually have multiple. I usually work with GPX. So I export to GPX, and that activity is now going to show up in my downloads. I can come right over here to my um, CalTopo, and I can then take that and easily import it. Um, brings it in. Voila. Okay, now that whole thing, and, and you can see it's a kind of a lot of, I, I ran this loop a few times in a, um, in a race, and I want to really only have one set of tracks in here to, to, to do this. This is something that you would do when you're making a map. I also want to trim out this section here because even though it was part of the course, it's not part of the uh, trail network that I want to have here. All right, so one thing I can do, that, so to do this, I've got a few things I'm going to do. One is, right off the bat, there's so many points in this, I do probably need to resample it. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go um, modify, resample, and I'm going to put uh, resamplings on uh, 0.01 miles. That'll actually reduce the number of points that are in there. Notice it smoothed out a little bit there. And um, so now there's a lot less points on the resampling. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I can actually see my beginning point. Um, but what I'm going to do is I, I was doing laps. So I'm just going to pick a spot in the spider web. And I'm going to go ahead. And this is the tool that you use a lot. Modify, split, which splits the line. So now if I look at that line, well, it appears that that line, see this is a ton of stuff, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line and I can edit it and so I can easily see what it is and know if it's what I want, I can change the color. So let's make this guy um, orange. Now, if I look at that, where does my orange line go? It doesn't appear to do much of anything. It goes and stops right there. So that line is probably not doing me any good. I'll delete it. And I'll pick another spot that I got here, and I'll do another split. So let's do this again. Let's do modify, split, and voila. Now that one here appears to be, okay, that's this one here. Let's do this again. Let's edit it. Let's make it orange, just like the other one. And now I can see that that line actually does go um, through the through the entire course well, a couple times in fact okay well now that tells me that there's all this other stuff I don't need it so now all I'm left with this is with this orange one and there's two of them well that's easy to fix too I just simply go in here and now what I notice is that that orange line which says Inverness running as I split it I'm going to get that same title on everything and I don't want it okay now it's gone and um, that just, if you do it one time at the beginning of splitting, you can, you can prevent having to do it over and over again. But I'm going to actually split this one more time. Modify, split, okay. And as I highlight that, I can see that that actually goes through one time. Um, that line is going to make one loop. I can get rid of the other one now. You do a lot of this, deleting. Delete. I got this left. I don't even want this whole section here. I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, notice this is all one piece. I'm going to go ahead and split here. And I'm going to split here. And I'm going to get rid of this intersection. It's not part of any route. I'm going to get rid of this one. And I want to join these together. This, um, because it's one line, I'm not sure it's actually going to trot and join, but we'll try it. Okay, and what that does is, see it doesn't join there because this is all one thing. I'm trying to join it to itself. So I'm going to come over here and find a spot where I'm like, you know what, I want it to we're switching trails. 
like here. Well, can we call it the same trail? I'm going to actually make it into two trails. And um, what I'll do is this downside part here, I'll take it back up to this location because that was a turn. I want to split there. Now I've got, if I come down to the split location, I've got that one and that one. I want to put them together. Well, let's, to do that, to make it so that I can identify it, I need to give it a name. The name's temporary. I'll just put a one in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and modify, join, join it to one, join. And that should actually do, now, now it's all one piece because I've joined them at that location there. So it is all one route. Well, there's one other thing that I really want to do. Um, now, you're going to do this if you know that you've got some changes. But I know like right there where I've got this really weird jog, that's probably a GPS artifact. I don't really want that. So I'm going to go ahead and say edit. And notice I've got these vertices. I can slide them around to get it back to where I want it on the trail. So I don't have that weird little thing. <laughs> Who knows? It might have been where I jumped into the woods to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's just one of those things that happens. But now I've moved those. Now, the dark vertices, when you move them, they just move and everything slides over. If you need more vertices, if you take the light vertices and move it, notice it made two light vertices for the dark for the one that I just moved. Okay, so that is, um, it'll make more vertices. And then I can easily, if I want to, I can say, you know, I really don't need that, that many. I can go ahead and delete a vertex and it'll, there'll be fewer. With those simple tools right there, you've got enough to build very good and powerful um, maps of any location that you've actually been. Now notice that this, in this case, I've got an underlying map of an area that I've already been in. Um, but you know, in reality is you might not have that. You might have something like um, um, that, which doesn't, see here, I have no maps underlying it. Now this is a new map. I can then turn around and say, but you know what, I want it to be uh, the color I want it to be a black line, and I want it to be um, I want it to be dashed. I could also give it a directional flow, but I'm not going to do that here. But I can make it a, a dashed line, and there's my little park map of the places that I've been in that park. And I can easily go back and put more and more in. A few pieces of advice when doing this. One is build your map on a master. Build your map, I mean, so build your map on a working copy inside of Caltopo. And then when you've got it done, then export it and put it onto a master map of, of, all, your, of all your stuff. Um, it's easier if you make a mistake to do that. Another one is <clears throat> use the uh, feature. You have this add feature to add things, which a lot of things you can add. The first thing you should do is add some folders if you're going to have a complex map and put things into folders. It allows you to turn things on and off very easily. And, and it's a good good thing to do. I mean, it, it makes your life so much simpler when you're dealing with very, very complex maps. Uh, I have in my my set of maps, I've got some relatively complex uh, maps that I've used. Like, uh, let's, let's do, um, well, here's a very complex one. This is the ACFL map. And with all the information, this is the Across Florida trail run that is a virtual event that allows you to go for the big belt buckle. And I've got a lot of information in here, extra stuff too, and then different routes that you can take. And we, the, uh, the reason we keep it here is we keep it up to date with information. And I go out and run this all the time. You can see there's a whole bunch of folders. Everything's break out into legs. It's just there's a lot of, lot of data there. But Caltopo is an amazing tool to allow you to do these types of things. Well, now I've got a little Whispering Pines map with the trails that I've laid in, and you can do um, a lot more with this. Now, in this video, I do hundreds of videos. I will probably monitor some of the questions um, just as a, you know, to, to figure out how to do certain types of things and help people out with the mapping. Um, but, you know, you've got some incredible tools, ability to make really interesting maps, and, of course, uh, one of the things I can also do here, which I love this, is taking and this is a this is a Caltopo feature. As I can say, you know what? I've got this Google map, but let's at the same time underlay this with a um, with a uh, not a topo map. Let's use uh, let's just do a global imagery. And of course, you know that just 
totally washed out the other map. However, I can make the different map layers at different levels. So I can really make this a, a very solid uh, map with the features that I want on it. Anyway, that was map, uh, mapping 101 with Caltopo. Hopefully I'll be able to create some more of these.